Yeah, the lyrics alone, um, you know, knock his dreads off, call him Randy Moss. Like the lyrics, like, no, like people ain't listen to it, like they're gonna keep dancing. I, I hear the catchiness, like, yeah, I see why you're dancing, but listen to what you're dancing to. Like you're celebrating this activity, like without knowing, like, yo, listen to the lyrics, turn the music off. <laughs> yeah. What's y'all thoughts on um those records that because uh, I feel like Young Dolph had it had it in his his music here and there, but it's a lot of artists that has that in there. Well, what do you think, Minister Man? Well, mm. you should probably preface that Minister never says what he thinks. He just <laughs> drops facts. <laughs> he drops research. Uh, so what is that? What has the research shown us, brother? I, I feel like, you know, the, the old adage of history repeats itself. It's not true. We repeat history when we don't learn from the past. Okay. Mm -hmm. I always tell young cats, whatever mistakes you make, make new ones. Many of the young cats Ooh. who followed us, now I'm 51, and as I read these reports of us losing our artists, and I just got to keep it a buck, we still haven't learned jack shit from losing Tupac and Biggie and Big L and mm. Freaky Ty, okay? For some reason, we keep having this Groundhog Day and the Groundhog Day is becoming worse and worse and worse, okay? I also look at this as kind of a, a cultural war, if you will. I'm gonna rewind you back into the memo that was put out by J. Edgar Hoover to his agents in the field after the assassination of Chairman Fred Hampton, where he says that once we got Fred Hampton off the set, we need to make black youth understand that if they choose to be revolutionaries, they will be dead revolutionaries. Later in the memo, he says, why can't these black youth choose to be artists and athletes where American society will, uh, they will be beloved by American society as opposed to being despised. So I kind of look at it in part as being socially engineered into certain things. And then when you get them into certain spots, now you begin to use their culture against them. Okay. Mm. And like I said, I'm, I've seen this happen and I can take it as far back as bebop and how revolutionary bebop was and how when the FBI was having surveillance on bebop artists, I'm talking Charlie Parker, I'm talking Thelonious Monk, I'm talking Dizzy Gillespie where they felt that bebop in particular was introducing young people, particularly young white youth to marijuana. And brother Seiko, you may have remember when the DuPont family put out a, it was a documentary they put out called Reefer Madness. Okay. And the reason why they put it out was because they saw what cannabis and hemp would do to destroy their particular industry. So they had to criminalize hemp by coming with this thing called reefer madness. And this is one of the ways how music and basically culture has been used as, as a weapon to destroy certain things. So because those entities saw the golden era of hip hop and they saw what it was able to do to get us to stop going to the club and have us going to Mr. Farrakhan lectures, Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, Dr. Asante lectures. We need to change that narrative back into from being gorillas to gangsters. Okay, so, so I'm kind of giving you a little historical context to say this is nothing new. It's just the weapons have gotten more sophisticated and the consequences have become more fatal. Mm. Definitely. So are you saying like the elders who keep saying it's all about the music? These young folk just keep listening to the wrong music. And it's the reason that they're doing all this stuff is the music. You're saying that it's been contrived. Mm. And, and see, those people don't help matters much because 
you can't, you know, Peter Ty says you can't blame the youth of today. OK, how can we blame these young people without having to look back at a Millie Jackson or Denise LaSalle who were putting out similar raunchy lyrics? Mm. Mm. OK, so I don't get into critiquing young people because they didn't learn this in a vacuum. Mm. Nope. They had to get it from somewhere, somehow. And, and I think sometimes those of us in older generations, we have a nasty habit of being hypocritical and passing the buck and putting the weight on the youth. Okay. When, okay. when the youth didn't know where they get it from, they just picked it up from some, like I said, they didn't get this in a vacuum. They picked it up from somewhere, from somebody. So I think we as older generations have to carry a lot of the weight for the condition that the youth are in today. Definitely, yeah. It's, um, <clears throat> it's picked up bad habits. It's all programming. Yeah, so that definitely reflects, you know, like um, definitely growing up, I learned bad things to say because based off of people, I was, older people I was around, like, oh, you, you don't say that. Like, oh, but he said it. You know what I'm saying? It's right. all bad mm -hmm. programming. Like, we got to, um, and then it's, it's all about the environment, you know. They say, uh, you, know, you know, a village raised a child, you know, I probably messed up the the the, fa the phrase, but it's very mm -hmm. important surroundings of a, a person's development. You know, it can right. hinder a person, and then mm -hmm. uh, they just reflect on where they come from. So, right. you know, they they walk from where they come from. You know, and and to add on what what you had just said, you know, the old adage of it it takes a village to raise a child. Well, what do you do when you have a sick ass village? Oh yeah. Whew. Mm. Okay, sick children, man. Preach, so, preach. So if, you, if you got a sick ass village, you can't produce healthy fruit. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, so when do we start healing the village? You see, yeah. So that's why I said we have to stop looking at things in isolated things and in vacuums because that's not who we are as a people. We always look at things holistically, interconnectedly, and in its totality. <laughs> mm. and, and that's how we have to uh analyze the issue and how we have to solve the issue because like i said everything is interconnected everything definitely so, yeah. so how do we how do we stop the, the 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 community from being toxic mm. Mm. You, you know my thing i've always said a revolution What's begins in a mirror You know, everything begins with you. So what can you do on an everyday basis to conduct yourself and to live an upright, moral, righteous, and civilized life? 